In this episode, I'm taking a look at the Raspberry Pi 2 Portable Mark IV. Hi, and welcome to the show. I've been continuing down the Raspberry Pi 2 Portable Road, and I'm up to Mark IV. And this one is a five inch touchscreen version. Uh, no keyboard attached, just a uh, touchscreen five inch Raspberry Pi portable with a 2.6 amp hour battery that you can just fit into your pocket. Let's take a look. All right, so here we are, Raspberry Pi 2 portable. Um, it's a, uh, just a case that I've designed up for myself. Um, not anything particularly fancy, but it does the job. Uh, holds the five inch touch screen in place. And like, as I said, it's a touch screen. And you'll have noticed just then that the touch screen itself is um, out of alignment or out of orientation. And that is because, I'll just use this little keyboard here. Um, I've actually got my touch screen, the entire device flipped around and I'll, I'll explain that a bit later. So this is just the calibration software that comes with the distribution. Touch the squares. And there you go, your screen is calibrated. As you can now see, I can draw on the screen, hit the start menu, go to games, whatever it is, and away we go. So a quick look around the Raspberry Pi. Uh, five inch touchscreen. This is one of the eBay touchscreens with the little HDMI U bracket. And we'll have a look at that, but uh, this is not one of the original or one of the official five inch uh, GPIO only touchscreens. This one has touchscreen, resistive touch by the way, not capacitive, resistive single touch screen through the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi 2, but the actual video is run through a HDMI C bracket. I'll cover that. So Raspberry Pi to five inch screen works quite well. Uh, resistive touch, like I said. So when you do make your case, you wanna make sure that you don't cement the lid down really tight because you'll actually be touching the resistive um, surface and you won't have resistive touch. Um, so I haven't really done much down the bottom as you can see, I've left most of that open. Um, that's just like I said, because it's not a complete, complete build. Um, power switch on the side, plenty of ventilation. The Raspberry Pi 2 itself up this end, I've got a Wi-Fi and a keyboard adapter in there, but you do have touchscreen with on-screen keyboard, so you can use that if you really, really want to. I don't particularly like it. Um, and nothing else really around the back, little spot to get to the uh, SD card down the bottom. So I'll take the lid off this, and let's just take a look inside. Okay, so just screws, take the lid off, here is the five inch touch screen. I'll have to switch it off in order to be able to do this um, because this L bracket here, which um, binds the LCD screen to the Raspberry Pi 2, uh, actually forms part of the brace. And uh, as it's configured right here, you can't just lift the screen off without taking out the HDMI adapter. And there's the uh, C bracket that I was talking about two HDMI adapters, perfectly spaced to be able to adapt to the screen and straight into the Raspberry Pi. So from there, I'm actually able to remove the screen from the Pi. It's just detached via the GPIO headers. Hopefully you can see that in there as I take it apart. Okay, so there is the Raspberry Pi GPIO. And there is the uh, header already attached to this LCD driver board that goes directly in and uh, provides the touch interface. Um, just on this touch screen, it comes with a few little brass legs so you can make a complete stand up. Uh, I only needed the one for my particular um, build, but yep, it does come with four. The HDMI connectors, full size standard HDMI connector and there is a five volt power in. You do not need the five volt power in if you are taking the power from the GPIO. Um, however, if you're not using this particular GPIO pinout, you can still run this HDMI and power in and just use it as an actual monitor by itself. Uh, it does have an on off switch as well, which is actually kind of handy because if you can uh, power off the backlight, the whole thing uses less power 
and you can actually get it to run longer depending on how much battery power you've got. Okay, so just in my build here, I have the Raspberry Pi 2 itself. Everyone's familiar with those. Um, I have the SparkFun board doing my power distribution. Again, I've used those a few times before, so hopefully everyone's familiar with those ones. And I have the Pololu 5 volt power regulator. So the configuration very simply is the SparkFun board has the 2.6 amp hour power tech battery. That one is connected to the SparkFun board battery connection, the, which is this side, just in here. Battery's connected to there. Main power comes out of here into the SparkFun board, uh, into the Pololu 5 volt power regulator, comes out of the 5 volt power regulator, and I've tapped it onto the bottom of the 5 volt input of the Raspberry Pi. That provides power to the Raspberry Pi and to the screen when the screen's actually connected. So overall, it's actually quite a simple project. There's not a lot to it. The case design was the part that took the most amount of um, time and complexity uh, and just trying to get that the way I wanted it without making too much space and with also not trying to make it as small as humanly possible because I just can't assemble it. So that is a reasonably small design. It does fit in your pocket. Um, so what have you got to do is to actually put one of those together yourself? Well, let's have a look. All right, well, this is actually everything you need to make yourself a five inch, fit in your pocket, portable Raspberry Pi. Um, something that'll run um, mobile uh, with Wi-Fi for around about two hours. And if you put a bigger battery in, you can get it to run longer. Okay, so the case itself in two parts. Um, this one's actually my design. If you want the STL file, print your own, just let me know. So case itself, the five inch touchscreen eBay special, um, which comes with that very handy little U-shaped HDMI adapter. It's all one piece. So 800 by 480 screen resolution on that. So it's not too bad and the clarity is actually quite good and the resistive touch surface, very sensitive. Okay, so case LCD battery, 2.6 amp hour, 18650 battery in this case. It's not the only choice, but that's the one I went with. Okay, so the little spark fun board. All right, so I've got the little spark fun board here. And again, I've used those in a couple of projects, so everyone should be familiar. The battery with a two, two millimeter JST connector is hooked into the battery section. The power out section, again, with a little two, uh, two millimeter JST connector, runs through a switch just in line into the input of the five volt power regulator. I really do like this power regulator. And if you have a look at the charts for power regulation, this one still puts out about two to two and a half amps, even when the battery is down to its low 2.93 volt um, supply. So, and when the battery's full, it's putting out quite a lot, like four, four and a half amps. So more than enough power coming out of the Pololu power regulator. And like I said before, into the Raspberry Pi, the positive and the negative on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi, just in front of the USB adapter. Uh, just be very, very careful what you're doing here. Uh, you can easily get a connection between the two and you'll just start cooking things. But I've also hit that with a little bit of hot glue just to be able to ensure that the wires remain separate and nothing in that center there uh, can uh, bridge when uh, wires move around. What about the configuration? There is a specific configuration. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can run normal Raspbian and go through a couple of configuration setup, config file modifications, uh, some driver software that needs to be downloaded to get the board running. Um, but there is a slightly easier way. And uh, we'll jump over to the computer and we'll actually have a look at where you can grab a couple of nice easy distributions and get this up and running within an hour. Okay, so just using a web browser, we're going to head over to the WaveShare site. So just copy this URL post it into any web browser, and you're at the five inch HDMI LCD WaveShare site. And we want the resources section down the bottom. So if you scroll to the bottom of the page, you will actually find a complete image. It's the uh, Raspberry Pi build. The complete image is available. It's about a one gig download. Uh, and what that does is it gives you the, the ability to download a Raspberry Pi image that is complete, has the 
uh, configuration or the calibration software for the touch screen and it has the uh, screen resolution and everything already set up and ready to go in the config file. So just note that it is a gig in size. Uh, hit download and download that to your computer. Okay, so once you've downloaded that, unzip it to a folder and you'll see this nice long file name.img and that's the one that we're actually going to write to the SD card using Win32 Disk Imager. So fire up Win32 Disk Imager, point it to the file that you've just unzipped, make sure you've got your SD card selected as the source and hit write. So once you've finished and you've written that to your SD card, pop your SD card into your Raspberry Pi, attach the screen, turn everything on, you're right to go. From the Pi itself, go back to this website, the Waveshare website, and download that link, the uh, driver. It's about 60, 65 meg, the LCD show driver file. Download that to the Raspberry Pi. So once you've downloaded that file, like I said, about 63 meg, once you've downloaded that file, use the tar command. If you're not familiar with Linux, it doesn't matter. You'll actually see the tar command that you actually need to unzip that file on the Raspberry Pi on the website. And there it is just underneath the resources, the tar command that you will use to unzip um, the file you've just downloaded. Once you have unzipped that file, you then enter the LCD show command. So first things first, go to the directory that you've just unzipped to, so you can see all of the LCD show files. Once you're there, run the sudo command for the LCD show five. So it's the one down the bottom there, there it is there. All right, make sure it's that command, so it's a dot slash. All right, run that under sudo, and that will install the drivers for your LCD. Reboot your Raspberry Pi once you're done, uh, and you will have touchscreen working. So there you go, a quick look around my five inch touchscreen Raspberry Pi 2 portable, Mark IV, so the five inch one. I'm coming back to the seven inch one uh, in the next episode and looking at that one a little bit differently. And then I'll actually be looking at a nine or a 10 inch one after that one as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have. And I hope to see you again, or hope you'll join me again in a couple of weeks time.